you know, I weighed 309 pounds when I went on the show, and I weigh 218 now. So, you know, whether it, you know, I lost 41 pounds on the show, and since I've been working out at home, and I work in the gym, and I work out six days a week, two hours a day, you know, uh, anybody can do it. I'm, I'm nothing special. And uh, Zach and his mom, I, they're big fans of the show, but I want to tell you, I never watched the show. Uh, I had no interest in being cloned as a loser. Okay, I, I don't even know. Uh, I'm a teacher and I'm a football coach up at, uh, or down at Snyder High School. And uh, uh, you know, we're not used to losing. And, and, and so I really never watched the show. And, and when I'd be uh, surfing the channels and I'd see big, big people, I'd think, well, gee, I'm not that big. What do I want to watch that show for? So uh, I really didn't know much about it. So I, uh, I, I uh, uh, get a call from my brother and a year ago, uh, his uh, daughter and daughter-in-law uh, wanted him to stand in line and cast for The Biggest Loser in Omaha, Nebraska. And so he's all excited telling me about it. And I say, oh, I'm just, oh yeah, yeah, they'll never pick you, they'll never pick you. So, <laughs> so, so he, uh, he, uh, he goes through the whole process and, and there's a huge process that involves. There's a lot of paperwork and there's a lot of uh, uh, videotaping and making uh, 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 tapes of yourself and your family and, and why you want to do it and, and, and what you expect out of it and things of that nature. And, and, uh, and, and so the process goes for several weeks uh, until uh, they select somewhere between 40 and 50 people from around the country to come to California as what they call finalists, okay? And, uh, and so he made it up to that point and, uh, and they uh, uh, told him that um, they were changing the format and they were going to go teams <coughs> in season 11 rather than singles, and he didn't have a partner. So they said, can we keep your, uh, your uh, pile active? And he said, oh, sure, you know, and he tells me, they'll never call me. I said, you're right, they'll never call you. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, that was a year ago. And, uh, and so uh, lo and behold, they gave him a call and they said, would you be interested in casting? You don't have to go through all that. Uh, we'll, we'll run you through. He says, do you know anybody that <coughs> could lose 100 pounds? He says, because we're going to go teams in season 12. And so he immediately called me. I said, wait, wait a minute. What are you trying to tell me? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Rick, I said, I really don't care that much about it. I said, I, I, I have a law maintenance business. I, I teach. I coach. I've got a lake cottage, you know, just a lot of things. I love to play golf. And I says, if, if I'm going to do that sort of thing, I've got to give up a lot. And to be real honest with you, I always looked at myself as being big. But when I was younger and I was in high school and I was in college, big was good because I played football and I wrestled and, 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 and it did uh, good things for me. Uh, but as you grow older, big is not good. And, uh, and yet I failed to realize uh, the health issues that I, uh, that I found out about, and I failed to realize the proper nutrition that is important for you to maintain and, uh, and live a lifestyle that is going to keep you around for a lot longer. So uh, my brother, who was uh, close to 450 probably, and I said, Rick, I said, uh, I'll do it for you. I said, I, I want you to get healthy. I want you to buy time with your grandkids. Uh, I want you to get back to playing golf. And, 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 and since he was so far overweight, he had developed a hip problem where he had bone on bone. Okay? And so uh, he was in a lot of pain at times and take pain pills. And, and, uh, and I said, I, I, I hated seeing it, so I said, I'll do it for you. So uh, we, he came to uh, uh, Fort Wayne, and we uh, did a video. Uh, I did a video about myself, then he did a, another video about him, then we did one together. And we went, uh, we went to our old neighborhood where we grew up, and, and we, uh, we went to uh, my uh, elementary school, and then we went to our high school, and we started tossing the football around. And back then when we were uh, fit, uh, in high school, uh, they used to call us the Twin Tornadoes. So that was our tagline, Twin, twin Tornadoes. So, so we did that. Then we, we would go to, uh, you know, your favorite uh, eating establishment. So we went down to Coney Island, and we stacked up the hot dogs, and we ate them and put them on. 
not a good thing. But anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, so we did that, and we submitted the tapes, and we filled out the paperwork, and then you just sit, you wait, and you see if, if they're interested. Uh, uh, but he was the one that had the in uh, with uh, The Biggest Loser. So, so uh, uh, it went on, and, uh, and it was right after spring break last year, right after the first week of April, I got a call, and they said, uh, uh, Mike, said, congratulations. Uh, you've been chosen as a finalist. And I said, that's great. Have you called my brother? He said, well, they've changed the format. They're going to go singles. They're going to go singles this uh, season. And uh, we picked you. Uh, I want you to come to California. And I said, well, my brother too? And he said, uh, well, no, unfortunately, we didn't pick you. And I said, well, I said, I'm really not interested. I said, uh, the only reason I got involved is because you called him. You wanted him to get a partner. He got a partner. Now you're telling him you want me and not him. So uh, I said, you call him. I'm not calling him. <laughs> you call him and tell him what's going on. So Angelique was her name, and she called and told him, and he calls me. He says, hey, he says, don't worry about it. He says, I want you to do this. It's the greatest thing for you. I said, ah, Rick, I said, hey, you got my full support. And then I talked with my wife, and my wife really didn't know much about the show either. She says, you're never going to have an opportunity like this. He says, just go to California and find out what they want, you know. So I said, okay. And a week later, they called my brother and they told him they want him to come to California. So that was good. And we still, to this day, don't know how that happened. But uh, so here's what happened. You, you go to California and you are put up into a very, very nice uh, uh, hotel. It was called the Tradewind, uh, Tradewinds Resort. And uh, you had nice rooms and facility, but you are sequestered to a room. And you are in that room by yourself. You've got television. You've got uh, newspapers and that. But you can't talk to anybody else. You can't leave your room. You can't go anywhere uh, without a casting person with you. Now, my brother and I would talk on the phone. But uh, they didn't want others to know that brothers were there. Uh, and so when we would go for different tests and different things that uh, we had done, uh, even when we went with other contestants or other finalists at that time, you couldn't talk. If you talked, it was, hi, good morning, how are you? But you couldn't say, hey, where are you from? Ah, what do you do for a living? You know, everything was on the hush-hush. So that goes on for about seven to ten days. And all through that time, you go through an enormous amount of physical testing, okay? Kidneys, liver, uh, heart, um, Sleep, sleep tests for sleep apnea, diabetes, uh, right on down. I mean, I, I've never been tested so much in my life. And then you go through psychological testing with the psychiatrists and uh, nutritional with the dietitians. And, uh, uh, you know, we took tests like the Minnesota Mental Aptitude Test, uh, 575 questions, okay? 575 questions. I don't even give a test in school that big. <laughs> Anyways, uh, and then we went, did the Wonderlick test that uh, they put the pro uh, uh, players in the combine through and stuff like that. Then they determine, are you physically able to do this? Are you mentally? Because if you watch the show, people break down because of this, not because of this. Okay? Now, some aren't obviously as fit as everybody else. And, and, uh, and you can see the difference, but it's, it's a mental thing. So uh, we went through all of that, and then they're going to make the final selection. And that was the day they cut my brother and said, you know, we could get you to lose weight, but we can't take that pain away from your hip. So he came to me and he said, Mike, he said, I'm going to work hard at home. I'm going to change my life just like you're changing yours here. And, uh, and he said, I'll be with you. And I said, uh, good. I said, that's what I want. And so he, uh, he went home and he couldn't do hardly anything because of his hip, but he did get a hip replacement uh, mid-September and he changed his lifestyle. He changed what he was eating. He has not worked out because it was too painful to work out prior to the surgery. And then he did do therapy to get stronger afterwards, but he's lost over 125 pounds. And that is primarily through changing what he eats. Okay? So then I went, uh, went on, and, uh, and if you watch the show, we started out in the desert, which really isn't a desert, it's a dried up lake bed, but it looks like a desert. And, uh, and, then, um, and then from uh, after that first premiere show, in fact, to tell you uh, how I was most of the time, 
when Allison came across the desert in the Hummer and she steps out of the car, everybody's going crazy, all right? Did they show me on TV? I wasn't going crazy. I didn't even know who she was. <laughs> I turned I turned to Boston Johnny and I said, who's that? I didn't even know who she was. So, so anyways, uh, that's how, how it all got started. It was fun for me because I didn't know what to expect. I, you know, I, I didn't know, uh, I knew who Bob Harper was, but uh, other than that, uh, you know, we had two new trainers. Uh, we had uh, Anna Kornikova, uh, you know, an international star in tennis, and then Dahlbeck Quince, and uh, he's been training for, for years. Uh, and they they were the new trainers. And, uh, and, and uh, we got Anna because we were the last of the challenge that day. But I knew we weren't going to win anyway, and I told those people, I said, we're never going to be able to outdo these young people, the 20-year-olds and the 30-year-olds and the 40-year-olds. I said, Bonnie can't walk. She can hardly walk. So how are we going to beat them a mile, you know, to win this challenge? I said, here's the deal, and this is going to be the mindset of every, everything we ever do. I said, we're going to finish what we start. I don't care how long it takes us, we're going to finish what we start. And that was our, our theme on the blue team the whole time. Whatever we start, we finish. And, uh, and so uh, the next day we head to the ranch. Now the ranch is located in Calabasas, California. And it's in uh, the Santa Monica Mountains. It is the old King Gillette Ranch, uh, the shaver guy in them. Uh, and uh, it was his homestead. It's about 800 acres. It's a state park now. Uh, but NBC leases out all of these buildings, including the main house. And uh, you all could be out there right now driving through the, the premises, but you can't stop and talk to the contestants, and uh, you can't take pictures and things like that. That's where the ranch is. And then, um, and then the only time we ever left the ranch is if we were doing challenges or we were doing something uh, outside. Like one time we, we uh, worked out on the, on the beach one time. Another time we had to go uh, to do a challenge uh, in, uh, uh, in, a, in a pool. And then, uh, then we went up to the mountains and did the um, uh, obstacle course. And, and we went to the high school and did the NFL challenge. And, and so, you know, that's the only time we left. And so everything is on the ranch and, and your trainers come in every day and, uh, and you are uh, sequestered. You can't leave the ranch. And we had no phone, no computer, no newspapers. We had uh, music we could listen to only on days that we weren't being filmed, okay? And, uh, and then uh, uh, we uh, just had ourselves. And if you uh, can uh, recall Big Vinny, uh, Vinny's from uh, Nashville, he's a singer-songwriter. He brought his guitar. And we had, we had a great time, you know, him singing and singing song to us that uh, he had written. And, uh, and many of you probably don't know, but uh, Vinny uh, and his band, that's called the Trailer Choir, uh, toured and open acts for uh, Toby Keith, and so uh, he's well known, very well known, and he's a great guy. But that's how we kept ourselves entertained. We had no, we didn't have anything. We had no contact with the outside world, let alone our families, for all the time you're on the ranch. So uh, you know that's that's a difficult you know part, but uh, you know there's a reason why you're there, and and family is part of that reason. You're trying to do what you can do. To better yourself for your family, and that was one of the reasons I was there as well. So, um, you know, that's a, uh, an important part. And, and while we're there, you know, we, they teach us, you know, about food and nutrition. They teach us about shopping, and they teach us how to cook, and and uh, they provided us with all the food. Okay, uh, but when I asked them if they couldn't, uh, you know, get a little bit of Moose Tracks ice cream in there for us, they didn't, they didn't think that was a good idea. Uh, They'll, they would get us anything we want that was nutritious and value, and, uh, and we did our own cooking, and uh, uh, and we uh, oftentimes cooked for each other, and then uh, sometimes uh, uh, you know others cooked for themselves. The red team was very very close, and uh, they did everything together. They cooked and and uh, and they worked out everything, and they they, they were kind of uh, on their own. And then uh, uh, the black team, uh, Antone. Uh, uh, Sonny and Joe uh, were real tight, and, and they were uh, uh, good friends And, I, and uh, it, with the blue team. And the blue team were good friends with everybody because we were the older figures, family, fair, mom, dad, pop, grandpa, you know. So, uh, but uh, uh, the, uh, 
Jennifer, who was the at-home winner, and John, who was the show winner, they were kind of on their own. They were kind of separated. You probably saw that quite a bit on TV. But uh, uh, all in all, uh, we're all very good friends. Uh, there's no drama like there is on the show right now. We didn't have people that wanted to quit. And, uh, and in the long run, you saw that everybody worked really, really hard. So, uh, you know, it was a great experience for me. But let me tell you, you know, uh, what really uh, was the aha moment for me. Uh, we went through, and every one of us filmed with Dr. Heisinga, and he was, he's the specialist, the specialist doctor on the show. And uh, uh, he called me in the med room, and uh, Anna was with me, and they're filming, and he said, uh, he said, you know, you got a lot of problems. And I felt fine, you know. <laughs> but you got a lot of problems. I said, well, what do you mean? See, he says, well, uh, when did you have your heart attack? And I said, what heart attack? He said, you've had a heart attack. I said, I haven't had a heart attack. And he says, let me show you. So he, he puts it up on the screen, and here, here, here's a video of my heart beating, okay? He says, now, you see this, this valve coming around here? He says, how far is that going? I said, well, it stops right here. He says, yeah. He says, because there is no valve after that. You've had a heart attack. He says, now, you see these fingers coming out? I said, yeah. He says, those are arteries that have formed off of uh, the valve that's shut down. He says, now, we can't correct that problem, but we can make the rest of this heart strong if you're willing to work hard. And I said, I would have never known that. My cardiologist, the only thing I ever knew I had was uh, AFib, and um, the heart beats faster, and I take a pill to slow it down. Yeah, I never knew I had a heart attack. So that was an aha moment for me when he said, this heart here, how old are you, Mike? I said, 62. He says, this heart's 74. The life expectancy of a male today is 78. Women are 82. I don't know why we work harder. No. But he says the average male is 78. And I said, I can do the math. 62, 74 year old heart, 78. I said, that's it. It's time to change. So my mindset on the show is always challenging myself to work hard lose the weight and get to a point where I would be healthy enough to not only get down on the floor with these kids, but be able to get back up again. Okay? <laughs> that, was, that was a good thing for me. I was never in it to win it. Okay? Well, first of all, I went in at 309. Anton is 447. Okay? John is 445. Vinny is 398. Okay? I'm 309. I'm the, I'm the smallest. I would have had to bend down to 155 pounds to have challenged anybody to win the money. I knew that wasn't going to happen. I hadn't been 155 since I was born. So, <laughs> so I said, you know, it was all about challenging Coach Mike to work hard and do this for, you know, the right reasons. And so I thoroughly believed that I could be on the show eight to ten weeks because I was never a threat to anybody. And. Uh, I was, uh, it wasn't until we were in the elimination room when Bonnie started to talk that I thought, I'm in trouble. But up until that time, I never thought I was because I had lost the most weight of Team Blue. I was immune two out of the four weeks that I was there. I was the leader on the team, okay? Now I was Coach Mike. But it's a game. And that's what you, you know, that's what you got to understand. It's a game. And in the reality of life, you know, it doesn't make any difference whatsoever. And uh, uh, as much support mail that I got, you know, when I got home, Bonnie must have got the opposite. Because uh, she, she emailed me one day and apologized. She said, I, I made the wrong choice. I made a mistake when I let you go. I'm really sorry. I hope we made it. And I just wrote her back. I said, it's not about winning the biggest loser. It's about winning the game of life. And it's about changing your life. And she has since got a knee replacement and because she had, had already had one. And, and that's why she couldn't do anything. A lot of the challenges she wasn't involved in because, you know, she, she couldn't do it. So uh, when you remember the challenge, and, 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 and I'm pushing her up the hill. A lot of people said I should have just said that. <laughs> I said, uh, uh, you know, I told her, I said, Bonnie, it's the game of life. I said, you got to get on with your life. 
you got to do the right thing so you're going to be around for your family, and that's what I'm doing for my family. And I said, I'm where I need to be, and, and I'm not going back, and I'm not looking back. I said, I'm, gonna, I'm still on that journey. And I said, it's a marathon, it's not a, uh, a sprint, so we want to get the job done, and you need to, too. And I wasn't mad at her, I was disappointed at the time, but it's just a game. It's just a game. And the game really, uh, you know, if you play it right, I would have never been eliminated, but it's a game. And, I, and you don't have any control over that. So from that time on, you know, uh, uh, we've all been friends. Uh, we still communicate today. Uh, last night, I did, uh, it was yesterday, I just talked to Boston Johnny. Uh, and and, uh, and he's, a, he's a good man. They're all good people. And, uh, and that's the, uh, the good thing about it, is that uh, uh, good things have happened to you. You've made good friends. And, and you've learned a lot. And, and I get to come up here and tell you all about it and tell you how important it is not to wait. Not to wait, and don't think that you're too old. Don't think that you're too old. 62 years of age, okay, age is not a factor. If I can do it, anybody can do it. And uh, I noticed... Uh, I was gonna ask, the, the giant scale, is that what they actually weigh you on? That is no. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you a big trade secret here. <laughs> All right. The weigh-in that you see on TV it's not the way in. It's not the way in. The way in, let's say uh, that you're going to see that show on TV on Tuesday night, okay? Monday morning, let's just say that. Monday morning at 6 o'clock, we would have to be in the training room. We would have a urine test, a blood test, a water test, and an oxygen test. If you were not hydrated, you had to drink Gatorade until you were. Blood test to find out if you're taking things you shouldn't be taking, okay? Make sure your body has enough oxygen to keep it going, okay? And, you know, water. You're not retaining water, okay? So, one thing I didn't mention is that I no longer use salt. I use a salt substitute or nearly salt or something like that, okay? Because salt retains water. You have to do that. Okay, now once that was done, uh, 8 o'clock, the talent producer, assistant, director, and a cameraman would bring you into the uh, uh, training room, and they had a scale, about like that. Now, it's not like your bathroom scale, it was an official scale, but uh, you never saw what it was. So you could weigh in like this, or you wouldn't have to have anything on it if you didn't want to. It was up to you, whatever you wanted to do. So they say, okay, Coach Mike, get on. So you get on and you stand. Okay, step off. So you step off. All right, back on. You get back on. Okay, Coach Mike, nice job. We'll see you. And that's it. That's how you weigh in. Now they know what those numbers are. You do not know what those numbers are. So now we're going to weigh in what you see on Tuesday night. Okay? Coach Mike, you're next. Okay, so up you go. Okay, now you always wear these flip flops. I hate those. <laughs> And, and uh, I, I, again, trying to get in and out of them, you know, and so you go up there, and that scale is huge, like this. But that's not the real scale. Everything is done digitally. Now, what you see here, if I'm looking out at the camera, what you see here, I can see out here. So my reaction is the same one here. Okay? You're going to get my true reaction, but this, this has already been set. It's already been set by uh, uh, the show. And they know what that has to be, so that's all digitally done. So if you think on Tuesday night they're weighing in, they've already weighed in. They've already weighed in. But they have to, because then it would take so long. And that was, they're doing a little bit differently. Season 13, right now, they're not running everybody up at one, you know, one right after another. It takes a long time. And, and, and a lot of people had complained that the weigh-ins take too long. So now they're changing it up a little bit. But the way in is not the one you see on TV. On, on the television program, um, there'll be a challenge, and then one of the teams will have done something really bad, you know, and then Bob will walk in, or Dolette will walk in, or Anna. And they they act like they don't know. Yeah. Do they not know? They do not know. Okay. They do not know because your challenges, they are not around. Uh, they're not around. Like, for example, you remember the donut challenge? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Here's the strategy on the donut challenge. 
I never seen so many donuts in my life. <laughs> it was unbelievable. Okay, so I said, okay. And, but I knew, I knew none of the blue team were going to eat any donuts. I knew that, okay. So I said, okay. I hadn't had lunch. And I had 350 calories, okay. And I'm thinking, okay, I could do 10 donuts. Wow. Okay, and I'm thinking, if, if everybody else, if I thought the red team would, would, would hit the donuts hard, okay. <laughs> So I said, I'll do 10, but maybe that each one of them will have a couple thinking that they'll win that challenge. So I had 10. And then it was all said and done. And we get out there, and she started, Allison, started talking about a person, one person, one person ate 11 donuts. I lost count. <laughs> 11, 11 donuts. And I, and I said, because I thought I won. I thought we won. But, she said, another contestant ate, what are you, uh, 40, 50? Oh, yeah. oh. I, and they bleeped me out. My response, <laughs> <laughs> my response, they bleeped out. And you watched it. I could not believe that John would have ate that many because just the way he, he was, I, I, I never thought the black team would eat one, and none of them did. And his teammates were shocked. They were shocked. And Bob, as you well know, <laughs> was shocked. So Anna wasn't there. Bob wasn't there. Double, they never know. So when they come in, you know, and you see that they kind of act like they don't, they don't know. Okay. And so uh, then Bob doesn't take to those things. <laughs> They're not very happy. And he wasn't very happy. And, and, uh, and so... And I was telling you earlier, what, the reactions you see on the show, they're, they're genuine. They don't tell us what to say. They don't prompt us what to say. And, uh, and usually the people that get the most fa uh, face time are the ones that are most dramatic. I never knew that. You never saw me crying. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but a, lot, a lot of people said, you need to cry more. I, since I'm a big fan of the show, two quick questions. One, uh, after that, my dad and I, we always watch the, the first episode, and you see that first big workout, and we don't understand how you can get out of bed the next day. Are, are people, like, just sore everywhere? Yeah. You can't get out of bed. <laughs> you can't sit down where you want to sit down and try to get up again. Uh, it's excruciating, okay? And I was telling you. show uh, that. And you look yeah. at it, work out later, and you're like, wow, look, they're working when, out more. When you see these people falling out, Throwing up, you know, that's, it's true, it's true. That's the only time that we all work out together. That's the only time we worked out together. The blue team would have the gym for two hours. The black and the red team couldn't come in. The black team working out, the red and the blue team couldn't come in. The other, the other, the only other time we were in the gym is when we had a, a during the NFL week, we had a calorie burn and we did different exercises to see how, what team could burn the most calories, you know, in a, in a 50, uh, we had four quarters, 15 quarters. Uh, that's the only time we were in the gym together. So if, if we were, a typical day for, for me and most of us, get up in the morning and go walk three to five miles. Now around the outside of the ranch was about a mile, mile a little over. So that we walked what we call the presidential mile. Okay, then I would come back, get something to eat for breakfast, go up to the gym for two hours on your own. Anna told me, you better burn 2,000 calories before I see you in the afternoon. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> and so you have to work out on your own. So uh, three to five miles, get something to eat, go up to the gym, work two hours, come back, eat lunch, nap. I would nap any time I could get rest. <laughs> then we would meet with uh, Anna and work two or three more hours. Okay? It could be at the gym, it could be at those tennis courts. <laughs> they built those tennis courts just for her so she could work us out. Okay? And uh, I stayed to the art, I'm telling you, but boy is that hard. And then, uh, and then uh, we'd get done and we have to go to the training, uh, sports room, the training room. And I was saying, they had, you've seen them on farms and that, those great big water troughs, big hog troughs, I call them. We would fill that with water and ice. And I would just get my whole body in there. It was so sore. And, and uh, it was like that for, 
week and a half probably. It get a little bit easier as you go along, but for the first week it was gruesome. And uh, you could hardly walk, you could hardly get up. But it come time to go to the bathroom, you could hardly sit down, you know. <laughs> and if you did, you couldn't get back up. Uh, but, um, uh, but then your body gets toned, your body gets used to it. And I was saying that, uh, you know, I've been working uh, every day, and I worked all the way up to uh, uh, the 9th and, uh, of December. And that's when I flew out to California for the, uh, the uh, finale. I worked out Friday the 9th for two hours. I worked Saturday. And then uh, after the finale and everything, we had Christmas break and that, and I had gone to Florida. And when I was down in Florida, I didn't lift. Uh, I rode a bike 12, 15 miles a day, okay? Uh, and that was pretty much my cardio. And I uh, was down there for about three weeks. I came back, and I started lifting again. It's the same feeling all over. It's the same feeling. I was really sore, really sore. And then, then you lose it because your body gets back into it. But it's like the young man said about karate. He's using muscles that I've never used. And if I tried to do what he did, I'd be sore. I'd be sore. But uh, yes, yes. And, and, and that's why I uh, was at the gym. We had this lady, she was working out for the first time, and she was just spent, you know. And I said, you sore? She says, yeah. And I said, you're going to be sore. And I just, in your mind, understand you're going to be sore. Don't <laughs> let that soreness be your excuse not to come back or not to do it again, you know. And you just got to fight through the pain. And and, uh, and and if you could, you know, you realize the results, it'll be a good thing, you know. But that's that was true in what you said. We were all that way. And not only that, but the... the I didn't want to tell you, but I'll tell you. <laughs> the workouts were so intense, okay? Uh, people would get blisters, or they would have knee problems, or they would have hip problems. Uh, I remember that the big guys, Vinny, Anton, John, uh, Joe, they would have on the bottoms of their feet, they would have blisters, you know, just all on the bottom of their feet. And, and when Sandy would, would take care of them, I'd look at it, it looked like there was a hole in her foot. You know, I mean, that's the way it, now for me, I still have it, but not as bad as I used to because I've lost a lot of weight. But prior to it, I have neuropathy in my feet. Okay? And that's, a, uh, that's due to poor circulation or uh, the numbness that you feel. And, um, and it, it happened before uh, that I don't feel pressure points. Okay, so I could be having, I could be uh, getting a blister, and not even know. It, okay, so that uh, that happened when I was out on the ranch, and I got a blister on the third toe of my right foot, right on the tip of the toe, and the second toe on my left foot. So for weeks that I was there, we would treat those blisters every day, and it got to a point. I mean, because I couldn't feel, I had no pain, I had no pain, I just couldn't feel. They both got festered, and they both developed infection. And the day I got eliminated, I went to a specialist, and he said, I got good news for you, I got bad news. I'll take the good news. He says, you got good pulse, you got good circulation, bad news is you're going to lose this toe, and you probably will lose this toe. And I said, Dad, give it up for the biggest loser. <laughs> Your health is the most important thing, and they're going to watch out for you, and, and, and they're going to make sure that you're doing the right things. They don't want you doing the wrong things. You got the best doctors, the best nutritionists, the best trainers, and uh, and everybody you know looks at. They don't want you doing the wrong. They want you to do it the right way to show America it can be done the right way. That's really